I can just imagine the boardroom meeting for this movie. Okay, so we don't really know how to induce horror, so how many lazily done jump scares do you want? Yes! Hi, Popcorn Recap here. Today we'll talk about a 1982 slasher horror film called The Slumber Party Massacre. Before we start, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and of course subscribe to the channel if you dig the summary to support us. In Venice, Los Angeles, a mass murderer named Russ Thorne is on the loose. Trish is woken up by the sound of her radio. Yes, folks, it's 1982, and people do use the radio. She switches the station and changes her clothes. Oh, wow, I didn't get the memo that there'd be tatas here. Alrighty, she changes into a blouse. Yes, this is very important, my dudes and dudettes, for the, um, plot. Trisha's mom tells her that they'll be leaving and that Mr. Content, their neighbor, will check in on them in the meantime. He kinda looks sketchy, though. At school, Jeff asks out a telephone lady. However, as she goes to her van, she's taken by a mysterious man. Whoa, I wonder who this guy could be. She gets murdered as the guys leave. Meanwhile, at the gym, the girls are playing basketball. Diane acts like Kobe and hogs the ball. The guys watch on the side and admire the new girl, Valerie. Valerie scores and the other team scores as well. Later, the girls Trish, Kim, Jackie, and Diane head for the showers. And we're shown Le Boutte and some more tatas. Okay, as much as I appreciate this, there's absolutely no reason for the cameraman to focus on Le Boutte. The girls plan on having a party and Trish decides to invite Valerie. However, in the locker room, Diane tells Trish that she doesn't want anything to do with Valerie because she's a snob. Valerie overhears this because, hello, she's just on the other side of the locker? However, Trish insists and still invites her. But then Valerie apologizes and runs out. Trish informs the other girls that Valerie heard them. As the not-so-young-looking high school students prepare to go home, Russ Thorne watches from afar. Linda forgets something and separates from the group to go back to school. After Linda checks for her locker, she realizes that the doors are locked and she can't get out. Suddenly, Thorne attacks her with a power tool and she runs. Thorne chases after her and she hides inside a closet. However, her blood reveals her location and she gets drilled. I mean killed. Later, Thorne gets back in his vehicle. Meanwhile, John surprises Diane, who immediately throws him to the ground. Nice moves. John asks Diane if she can get out of the party later, and she says maybe. He kisses her goodbye and Diane leaves. Meanwhile, Coach Jenna goes home when suddenly, a drill pokes through her door. Ooh, alright. But it's not Thorne, it's just Pam who's putting the peephole through her door. <laughs> I bet she is. <laughs> Later, someone knocks on Trisha's door, but nobody's there, and the door's open. So she just locks it? I don't know, Trish. I think you should be calling the cops at this point. She decides to play the piano instead. Meanwhile, someone's already inside the house. As Trish tries to get out, a hand grabs her. But nope, it's not Thorn, just content. While in her kitchen, Jenna breaks a glass, and as she's picking it up, she notices something strange in her house. She goes to investigate and sees that her cat Muffin is hiding in her closet. Yada yada, fake jump scares. Meanwhile, as her friends arrive, Thorn watches from the bushes. Get it? Cause he's a, he's a thorn in the bush? As the girls settle in, Content leaves. Meanwhile, Valerie from across Trisha's house babysits her younger sister, Courtney. Later at Trisha's house, as the girls talk, they hear a sound in the kitchen. However, it's just a fake scare. Trish was just being an irresponsible girl and left the burner on. Suddenly, Diane appears by the window to scare Trish. Boo, fake jump scare again. Meanwhile, Valerie stays with Courtney when suddenly, they hear a sound outside. They think it's just a dog scouring through the trash again. Slasher films get kinda repetitive, huh? Ooh, strange sound. Let me check it alone without bringing anything for self-defense on me. Mm-hmm, very smart. Valerie checks on it and cleans up the trash. Meanwhile, Courtney runs upstairs to read a Playgirl magazine. Suddenly, Valerie sees that their swing is suddenly moving, so she runs back inside. Smart. Meanwhile, the two boys, Jeff and Neil, arrive at Trisha's house and watch the girls change clothes from the window. Valerie asks Courtney what she's doing. Courtney claims she's studying, but Valerie knows she's reading something naughty. As Trish orders pizza, Diane goes to the garage to fetch logs. She sees a snail and it startles her, but Content suddenly appears with a knife to kill the poor critter. Uh, more fake jump scares. Yeah, real creative there, folks. As Diane heads back inside, Content gets killed by Thorn. Uh, why do I feel like I'm rooting for the killer here? <laughs> Later, Jeff and Neil, still at the friggin' window, decide to leave. Finally. Meanwhile, Diane comes back with the girls. They read horoscopes. Trish suddenly feels cold and decides to close the windows. Outside, she sees a dark figure. Suddenly, the doll she threw away earlier is now stuck in the window. Trish and Diane decide to check on the garage door because stupid Diane forgot to lock it. Trish locks it and leaves, not knowing that Thorn is already there. Meanwhile in the bathroom, Diane talks with John on the telephone. The other girls listen in on Diane's conversation and snicker at her. 
However, Diane hears this. Suddenly, the lights go out. The girls decide to check on the fuse box in the garage. Yeah, because the high school girls who care nothing more about boys and marijuana would know something about a fuse box, huh? Trish, Kim, and Jackie head to the garage, leaving Diane behind. Suddenly, Diane scares them with a fake jump scare, because that's not gonna get old really quick, right? Suddenly, once more, Jeff appears, so he gets slapped the F out. Turns out, Jeff and Neil took the fuses. Great, now they're trespassing. Meanwhile, Valerie's still studying. Guess what happens next? Yes, she hears another sound outside. Valerie checks on it and again cleans up the trash. However, she gets attacked by, no, not Thorn, Courtney with a freaking knife. She says it's retaliation for what Valerie said earlier. Later, John arrives to fetch Diane. However, she can't go yet, so she asks John to park in the garage. Diane forgets to lock the garage again because her brain cells weren't included in the script. Meanwhile, Valerie helps Courtney with her makeup. In the garage, Diane and John are making out inside the car. As the two get heated, Diane blue balls John and tells him that the girls could come by at any time. But I mean, what are they gonna do anyway? Interrupt and join the party? Diane leaves the car and checks up on the others in the kitchen. She tells Trish that she's getting beers with John and then goes back to the garage. As she enters the car and reaches John for a kiss, his head suddenly falls over. Diane screams. Finally, some slashing. Diane tries to escape, but Thorn drills her. Meanwhile, Valerie and Courtney hear screaming. They look through their window. Later, Neil and Jeff, the two cardboard cutouts, drink with Trish, Kim, and Jackie. Kim calls Jaina and asks her about the uninteresting ball game. Suddenly, the pizza guy arrives, but as they open the door, his eyes are gone. Drilled. He falls in spectacular fashion as Trish screams her guts out. Meanwhile, Jaina on the other line hears their screams. Suddenly, the line dies. Jaina is startled by this. Soon, Trish calls for help, citing that there's a murder. Suddenly, the phone is cut, courtesy of Thorne. Later, Jaina calls Valerie and informs her about the strange situation. Meanwhile, Jeff and Neil brainstorm some stupid slasher film ideas. They decide to split up and make a run outside to ask for help since the phones aren't working. Trish tries to convince Jeff to stick together, but he's an idiot, so he doesn't listen. Trish instructs Jeff on what to do. The two guys prep themselves to make a run for it and head straight to Content's house. Jeff enters the garage when suddenly, Diane's body hangs from the ceiling. Terrified, he freezes, which gives ample time for Thorne to drill him. Meanwhile, Neil makes it to Valerie's door. However, she can't hear him because she's watching a horror movie. Dude, if we can clearly hear him, she can too. That's just poor sound design. Neil sees Thorne approach him. As he tries to wrestle with Thorne, Valerie gets up and checks on the door. She sees nobody. Great friggin' timing, am I right? Neil gets stabbed multiple times in the chest. Meanwhile, Little Thought here is talking to her friend on the phone about French kissing. Later, Thorne takes Neil's body into the garage. Man knows how to clean up. Nice. Thorne realizes that there's one missing. Jeff, who's desperately crawling back to Trisha's house. Inside, the girls cover up the dead pizza boy. Meanwhile, Jackie, the psycho girl here, decides to eat the pizza from the delivery guy's corpse. Meanwhile, Jeff is at the door making sounds. The girls investigate, but they don't open the door. Unfortunately, Thorne is already behind Jeff and murders him. You friggin' idiot. You really couldn't make a sound to call for help inside? Why are we friggin' rubbing the door like Mr. Miyagi's wax on wax off? Jesus Christ. He gets drilled, of course. Good for him. Meanwhile, Jaina drives out, still concerned about the girls. Yeah, because the screaming girls weren't enough for her to call the police. Back inside, Valerie looks for Courtney. However, she sees her head out. Stupid kid. As Valerie looks for Courtney, she knocks on Trisha's door but leaves. Because that's what you do after knocking on someone's door, right? You immediately leave right after? Mr. Thorne, can you please murder everyone here? I'm rooting for you, man. The girls inside hear this and Jackie runs to the door. As she opens it, however, Mr. Power Tool rips her throat out. Ah, cathartic. The girls run back to the room. Meanwhile, Valerie is still looking for Courtney who suddenly appears behind her. Valerie senses something weird going on and decides to leave Courtney to check the front door again. Courtney gets scared. Oh, so now you're scared, Courtney McFly. No cap though, she does kinda look like Marty McFly. Valerie checks on the front door again and sees that nobody's home. The two girls hear her. However, since Trish is suspicious, they don't make a sound. Valerie leaves and looks for Courtney, who's now missing again. Thorne sneaks into Trisha's room through the open frigging window. For some odd reason, they're able to knock Thorne out with a baseball bat. I can't with this movie. The two girls hurry to get out. However, Kim gets stabbed, so Trish leaves her. A true friend, I reckon. Meanwhile, Valerie is still roaming around like a friggin' idiot looking for Courtney. She sees her lying on the ground. But oh no, she's not dead. She was just pretending. Because that's the appropriate thing to do. Valerie and Courtney leave while Thorne is still looking for Trish inside the house. They both decide to enter Trish's house. As Courtney McFly opens the fridge, she sees Kim's body. She screams, Valerie screams, everybody screams. Suddenly, Thorne arrives and they all hide. 
Thorne scans the room and pulls the pizza boy's body into the basement where Valerie is hiding. She decides to run, but Thorne pretends to be a dead boy and covers himself with a blanket. Meanwhile, Courtney McFly here just watches him. Suddenly, Jaina enters and opens the blanket. She sees Thorne. Yeah, great job, Courtney. You, you could have warned her. Jaina and Thorne fight. Meanwhile, Valerie's looking for a power tool. She picks a saw and tries to carry it outside. However, because it's plugged into a frigging outlet, it pulls her back. Uh, duh, Valerie? As Thorne and Jaina fight, Courtney pulls Thorne's leg and he trips, giving Jaina a chance to hit him. Suddenly, Trish arrives to stab him. Okay, you have officially redeemed yourself, Courtney. However, Trish decides it's the right time to go into shock. Jaina pulls her away from Thorne, which gives him the chance to kill Jaina. Trish, you have officially become the worst character in a slasher film. Slow clap for you. Meanwhile, Trish is on the ground begging for her life as Thorne approaches her. Didn't you just stab him? You weren't injured, you freaking pineapple. Get the F up. Suddenly, Valerie comes out with a machete and corners Thorn into the pool. She swings at his drill and it's cut clean. Okay, alright. Valerie decides to chop, chop, and chop away at Thorn. He screams in pain as he loses his hand. Finally, Valerie swings at his guts and he falls to the pool. Valerie breaks down in tears as Courtney approaches her. The two sisters hug. However, Thorn is still alive. He ambushes the two bumbling idiots and wrestles with Valerie. Suddenly, Trish attacks Thorn, but he swings her away. As Thorn jumps, Valerie picks up the machete just in time and impales Thorn. He dies. The girls cry. Sirens can be heard from the distance. And yeah, that's it. That that's the movie. All right. Okay. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.